<laughs> He's hot. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, I don't care about these characters, so I'm. <laughs> My dear Bagginses and Buffy. Welcome back, everyone. We are talking about the Rings of Power. I know there's been a lot of excitement with other Lord of the Rings stuff recently, but Rings of Power Season 2 is coming before War of the Rohirrim. So, you know, that's what we got to talk about, guys. Like, that's that's the most current thing. So, um, an actor or actress is not returning for Season 2, and we speculated this when we saw the, the trailer. trailer. We yeah. said, where's Bronwyn? It's kind of weird. Uh, we see her son, we see her love interest, we don't see her, and it turns out she is stepping away from acting, so she won't be returning. Um, and I know, you know, not everyone's going to be that upset by this. Uh, I personally didn't <laughs> care about it as much. <laughs> you might be more... <laughs> well, I had a reaction off camera. What? <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, so... I mean, it's. I mean, it's too. I, I. I. I like they're exploring the like another human elf relationships. I don't know. Are they recasting her, or are they are? They missed an opportunity to kill her off. <laughs> right. Right. <I> like... <laughs> she, she <just laughs> that would. That would have been. That would have been a. Uh, so... That that would have. Uh, What's the word that the that guy always uses? Something about expectations. Subverted our oh, subverting expectations. our expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? You... No, honestly, it would have been uh, like a red wedding type thing where like it, nobody is expecting Bronwyn to ever die because exactly like you said, they're exploring this human elf love interest. And, and then be like, yeah, it did end in tragedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and just to have and have a have a like, heck, I know she says she stepped away. Pay her a boatload of money. Come on, Amazon, bring her back for like five minutes into five minutes into season two. Have her die, and just completely like everyone who is like kind of watching this in the back with like with it on in the background as they're like like making dinner or whatever they're gonna be just stopped in their tracks because that's gonna be huge uh that's a huge missed opportunity i agree with you uh so yeah we noticed she wasn't in the, the trailer and they've now said yeah she's not coming back i don't think they are recasting she her. she's focusing on her on woman life freedom uprising in iran that's right yeah so she's doing uh... yeah so I, think... I mean that's 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 good, but I, I, I mean I'm, I don't know. She, she obviously can do what she wants, but I mean I feel like her continuing might might have given her a, a bigger platform to advocate for these causes True. that she that are important to her. True. Uh, uh, it, it's a tough one. She she just seemed like it seemed to her that she couldn't do both in terms of time management. Um, so you know I I. I understand that, believe me. I understand time management issues. So, uh, you know, she chose what was more important to her. And obviously, you know, real life stuff like that is more important than making the rings of power. Um, I, I, yeah, it is. Uh, you know what? It is sad. I, she wasn't my favorite character. I kind of found her boring. But in a way, the fact that she kind of played this... Uh, her character was so straight and uh, on the side of good, and she was surrounded in this town by scum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's like the only attractive person. Yeah, and yeah. So she, she she's she the gets... only person wearing co everyone's wearing gray, and she's in like blue. <laughs> yeah, like they they knew like okay, she's hot. Let's put her in that bright blue, make her pop. And everyone else looks like they're like living in filth, and she's like the queen of this town. Oh, Even it... her son's dressed badly. Oh yeah, her son has like got like dirt all over him, and she's just like fully like done up, makeup, hair done. Like she's good to go. <laughs> yeah, I like I I I like that they were exploring the human elf stuff because 
you know, that... It's not just the Aragorn Arwen comparison. It also had some similarities to the initial, uh, and, and as did as did other aspects of the show. But it did have some similarities to the initial, um, you know, elf dwarf relationship between Legolas and Gimli, where they were not friendly with each other, much like humans and elves were not friendly in this show with each other. But then we got to see these two. Um, uh, getting along quite well and it it tried it tried to help bridge that divide i i just thought that the more interesting aspects of that particular part of the show uh were the villains or at least like the other people in town who were not goody good two shoe people they were they they were rough around the edges i found them to be more interesting than than her character but i was curious to see what was going to happen between the two of them so I am sad that uh, that we don't get that we don't get to find out what they had in store for that and, and that cathartic release when they either do get together or when they are fractured apart because you know these two races, especially in that particular uh, location, are just not going to be able to coexist uh, in a way that makes sense. So yeah, it. You know, it is sad that she had to step away as well. Like, um, I I just think it allows us to focus more on really getting to the villainy that is Sauron and and starting to bring all of these various groups together. Um, because right now everyone's so separate doing their own thing that we have to keep cutting. Like every five minutes we gotta cut to a new location. And I just, I. I want us to like actually get something done in a location before we cut away in five seconds. So um, I'm hoping we get that in season two. But speaking of season two, the big news that dropped recently is Tom Bombadil will be in the Rings of Power season two. Hmm. And played by Jack Black. <laughs> uh, we wish. Actually, Rory Keener. <laughs> look, look, Rory Keener is a great actor. Um, <laughs> So I don't know how many saw this movie, Men. Uh, he played everybody in that movie. Basically just him and one other actress. He does a phenomenal job. He's a great actor. I think he can sing as well. Um, but, I mean, people know, if you've watched my videos before, people know I don't like Tom Bombadil as a character. So I don't, I'm not that hyped for this. I. I you know, I, I guess I'm hyped for you guys. I'm hyped for you, and I'm hyped for all the fans that have been clamoring for a Tom Bombadil. Uh, I hope I hope it lives up to the expectations. I personally don't think it will, because you're going to see this character on screen for, I, I think, five minutes tops, and then they're gone. So uh, This guy cannot be in the show. Do, do people realize he breaks the, sh he breaks the world? He could just solve the problems. Like, he... he <laughs> He's too strong. He cannot be in the show for that long of a time before people start asking questions. Why doesn't Tom do it? It's the same thing. Like we've been dealing with this eagle problem for 20 years, and that, and that had a simple answer. But I don't have an answer for why Tom doesn't solve it, and neither did Tolkien. He just adds him in at the very end, saying Gandalf's going to go talk to Tom. Like th there's no reason that Tom can't just solve these problems. <laughs> so yeah. So the fact that he's not in Peter Jackson's, I think, is a huge improvement, especially for the, the story Peter Jackson wanted to focus on. Here, I'm worried that he is going to just show up and 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 have a chance to solve problems and not do it. And then he, everyone's going to be mad that Tom Bombadil didn't solve the problem. I, mean, I told you so. I told you this guy is no good. So I, I, I really do hope he works out. I love Rory Keener and... and and so I, if it, if he can pull this off, and if Rings of Power can pull this off, this might single-handedly, for a lot of people, flip this show into the good category. <laughs> like, oh look, really? we got a good. I, I, they, they may be annoyed that the first time they see Tom Bombadil is in this show. <laughs> well, I mean, look, if you're Rings of Power, like, what other? What's the worst case scenario? People don't like it even more. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're we're watching it and we're not that like we're not 
as obsessed with it as we were with with the original trilogy we're not going to stop watching because of tom bombadil like i'm not anyway um no just kind I, of cross our fingers that those parts are over quick <laughs> yeah now i'm kidding now, well, <laughs> Maybe, the, i don't know the, so do you watch rings of power with someone who doesn't watch lord of the rings no, I watch it by myself. <laughs> okay, well, I watch it with someone who doesn't watch Lord of the Rings. I'm going to have to explain to them who this Tom Bombadil character is. Now, what am I supposed to say? That that he's basically God, he can do whatever he wants, and he chooses to be a hermit and not help anybody? Like, what am I supposed to do here? Like, I hope Tom I mean, Bombadil does like, nothing. Actually, you're making me really think about, like, maybe there's something deep here. Like... Because people people always say like oh the problem of a of there being a god is is all the good and evil but then when Tolkien inserts a, an all powerful character he's completely unconcerned with good and evil yeah so this is this is a theological uh, <laughs> this is almost like a theological thing he's oh done. god <laughs> uh, you know I so because I do watch a lot of Lord of the Rings content on YouTube and TikTok I get a lot of Lord of the Rings like just shown to me. And there is a huge group of people who are convinced that the Lord of the Rings book trilogy is about religion. And they keep finding these like weird quotes and trying to like shoehorn it in. Oh, and really? you're, you're now you're has, giving has them the all Tom this. Tom think I'm oh, I'm giving No, no, the Tom Bombadil doesn't come up. But you're now you're gonna give them all this uh, extra fodder to just throw like, oh look, Tom Bombadil is the perfect representation of the Christian God or whatever. But, like because <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. Because he doesn't give a shit. Doesn't do anything. <laughs> Makes one miracle happen. He saves Frodo, <laughs> Sam, Mary, and Pippin from Old Man Willow, <laughs> a tree. That's just one good deed, and then he's like, I'm out. <laughs> I mean, look, the character is fun in a children's book, but once you start making a world as big as Middle Earth, the character doesn't work, and and it... I mean, look, I think people are almost doing it for the memes at this point. I don't think people actually like this character. Like, go read the passages. Yes, he's fun and he sings, but... That's it. He doesn't do anything else. And and I don't know. There's just... Other than just that fun moment of him singing and, like, easily solving a problem for the Hobbits. is Like, you know, tons of people do that over the course of the original books. Why, why aren't we obsessed, um, you know, with Farmer Maggot? Like... You know, he saves the hobbits also from from the uh, ring race. So, you know, why, why don't we have, why don't we obsess, you know, getting from our maggot proper representation in the movie? You know what I mean? Like, it just why are we yeah. obsessed with this guy? Um, yeah, they did. They did for our maggot dirty. And, they did. Uh... <laughs> and then Peter Jackson straight up, straight up uh, has him be this vengeful, crotchety old farmer yelling at the hobbits, which, again, why are Mary and Pippin stealing? his vegetables in the first place. I, I, you know what? I'm not going to get into it. I got to get into it. <laughs> Let's just, you know, those movies are perfect. We're not, not going to analyze them. <laughs> um, but I, I, yeah. So Tom Bombadil is big news. Everyone's talking about this now. Uh, this, you know, the still image, it looks good. It could be a bit more yellow, I think. Like, the, they kind of toned the color down. Uh, I've always imagined him to be vibrant. Um, but... Yeah. I, maybe they're maybe it's dark out or whatever. Maybe maybe they have it for a reason. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I am kind of excited to see Tom Bombadil, but again, I am nervous. Especially when I have people asking me what I'm supposed to, like. What what's this guy about? Uh, I I don't know what I'm gonna say. Heck, I could ask every single YouTuber who talks about this, and they're gonna give me a different interpretation of this character. The, the, this character is so uh, divisive and and weird that we we have no idea what his deal is. Um, but you know what? I think I think they are taking a huge. You know what? The show is already so poorly received that this is the perfect way to try out a Tom Bombadil and see what happens. Because honestly, I thought everyone got enough Tom Bombadil from Treebeard. 
some of his lines are straight from Tom Bombadil. I thought having Treebeard say them is great. And, you know, it, it's enough to have some of the fun of Tom Bombadil, but with a character that doesn't have the same baggage. So I, I thought it was a good compromise from Peter Jackson. Uh, here we're going to get straight up Tom Bombadil. The one thing I have to say in these shots of Tom Bombadil, he does not look as jolly as I expect him to be. Um, yeah. Now, the other aspect about this image here, and that is Tom Bombadil talking with the Meteor Man slash Stranger slash Gandalf. A lot of people are saying this confirms this is Gandalf because Gandalf mm -hmm. knows Tom Bombadil and this is that moment. Um, yeah. I think that's probably true. I, I think this is for sure Gandalf at this point. Uh, I didn't want it to be. I fought tooth and nail against you on this, but you were right. This is Gandalf. Uh, yeah, it's too bad because now it messes up my idea of the lore. Uh, but that's okay. It's the Rings of Power after all, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna be too upset about lore changes anymore. Um, but yeah, what do you what do you think about that? Like that's the big takeaway people are having that Tom Bombadil is sitting down with the Meteor Man. He is a wizard. He's one of the wizards. And he's talking to Tom. And it seems like this is like that moment of Gandalf saying Tim. to the hobbits at the end of the book series that I haven't spoken to Tom in a while, but I have to go have a long chat with him. Um, okay. Yeah, it could be Tom. I mean, it could be Gandalf. I mean, the, it, it would explain Gandalf's affinity for hobbits yep. and, his and Tom Bombadil. Like, his, that, like, this was his, like... So it's, we're getting, like, a Gandalf orange, origin story. Yeah. Okay, maybe I can get on board with it. Yeah, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe that, if they can pull that aspect off, maybe it's worth it in that regard. I really hope they can get the Elrond and the Galadriel as well. Um, but Galadriel's a, the tough one. I, 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 I'm aware of that. The Elrond one, I really want this Elrond to work. I, I know people are kind of mixed on this Elrond, but he's more... I, I feel like of all the characters, he has some of the least negativity surrounding him in terms of his like his look and and just how he acts obviously the people don't like the short hair but in in terms of all the other negativity surrounding the show he seems to have less of it so i do hope that they can do elrond justice as well but um i think the stranger is one that people are almost 100 percent positive about other than the fact that it's a wizard and that might break lore but like they like this style of this all like this ultimate powerful being who's not even sure who he is and trying to figure out like what's going on why was he sent here who like what's his purpose i think for the most I mean, part his story yeah, i mean tom bombadil's wearing kind of a bluish cloak here maybe he takes it off gives it to him and says you're a blue wizard <laughs> <laughs> so when i first saw this everyone's like that's tom bombadil i'm like just be a blue wizard like maybe this is what they meant by blue wizard but it, it's I, I think they've confirmed that it's tom bombadil um but that would be funny he takes off his blue gives it to gandalf and says yeah i've talked to the valar you are a blue wizard here you go <laughs> like, you're going east <laughs> never to be seen again what a <laughs> character gone <laughs> That's the opening, the opening scene is this, and then we never <laughs> see this character again. <laughs> that would be in keeping with the Blue Wizards. Oh man, talk about subverting expectations. I mean, should we just write for this show? Should we just send in some of these ideas? Kill off Ron one in a, in a Red Wedding style shock value entertainment thing, and also make this a Blue Wizard. <laughs> 
kill all the hobbits and <laughs> oh god yeah and then we it's just then we just have Elrond and Durin <laughs> yeah El El Elrond Durin and okay you can have you can have hot sexy Sauron back okay he's fine too <laughs> but for a new wig was made oh yeah <laughs> let's get him a different wig though <laughs> Hey, has anyone master, thought master master shapeshifter Sauron? Well, okay, so so on that topic, on that topic, could this not be Sauron in disguise? I mean, couldn't he just be anything at this point? Any any new character that's introduced, could it not be Sauron? I I guess yeah, because like now that heck, even a character that's already introduced, if we see a scene between two characters one might be Sauron like that's what I was kind of hoping for when they said Sauron was going to be this ultimate shapeshifter not just you know a different wig each episode <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> but to be fair don't you like the actor that's playing Halbrand like I like I the do actor. but it is, it is funny <laughs> You have to balance that, because you already have such a great actor playing this guy. So you're like, okay, we're just going to slap a wig on him. Every every episode, new wig, you going to look the same, but with blonde hair, gray hair, <laughs> black hair. And they don't even, don't like, know. change anything else about him. He's st still kind of a tall, lanky type build. Like, nothing else changes. I was hoping they'd go for more like a, I think we, I talked about this, like a Terminator 2 style thing where you have kind of like a main form he takes, but he can transform into other things, but yeah. then he goes back when he's in private. <laughs> and honestly, I, so, I think they bungled the idea of the first season because of this whole, you know, who is Sauron, it's a mystery, and they had like a few possibilities. I actually like the idea, though, of never quite knowing and always having that suspicion that like maybe this person that we're talking to is Sam, you know what i mean like I, I, there is an idea there of like a, a mystery surrounding it throughout the entire thing but i i that's a style that they they never were gonna dive into like they they kind of set this idea up of like here's three powerful characters one of them sauron you know it's a mystery uh, and then they quickly just told us who it was, basically, right off the bat. Because um, they wanted they wanted to just get to the, you know, the action, the good versus evil type stuff. But there is an idea that in an alternate world, the way the show is, is it's more of a mystery. It's more of Galadriel trying to almost like Sherlock it out. Who is Sauron? And I think that, yeah. that could have been a fun show. It's not the show necessarily that I would maybe want um uh, but i can see an idea there that could be fun uh just not not when you have so many other like they have so many characters that needs to be a more contained show you can't have that as well as having the old elrond durin stuff and not like yeah so you know they they they, they need to pick a lane and then just go hard in in there and Maybe Tom Bombadil is the way of saying they're going to go hard into this Gandalf storyline. Because, um, like, how much more really is there between Elrond and Durin, other than them having a falling out at some point to make Elrond kind of not like dwarves as much anymore? So, you know, that I don't really know what more they can do there. As much as I like those characters, and I do, those are my two favorite characters when, if I had to pick, I'd watch... I would watch an episode that has more of them in it than any other two characters, but I just don't know how much more growth there is. We've already got that growth of Elrond coming to terms with how his lifespan is so much... I mean, it's it's immortality versus a dwarf, who, even though by our standards lives a long time. Uh, you know, Elrond has missed out on so many milestones that... Yeah. Durin, Durin felt like they weren't friends. Like that was a good, that was a good growth moment for those characters. What else is there now that we've got the Mithril aspect open? Like they, they just need to have a falling out and have Elrond kind of be bitter towards dwarves for the rest of his life. Like that's, that's ultimately what I want to see 
happened there. So uh, other than that, all right, now we need to find something else to do, and Galadriel's really not doing much. Hopefully this uh, Gandalf wizard aspect can, can really revitalize it. Because I, I do hope we're kind of done with the Harfoots for a lot of it. They can be in it. They were like... they, they, they worked in the trailer. That's right. I don't remember them. I mean, heck, I, I didn't even see... Um, I didn't even see Nori in the trip. I don't think. Yeah, I know. <laughs> maybe they, I don't maybe know. they uh, took a, they, they had like a screen test and they're like, all right, people, what's your least favorite thing? And it's like the uh, Irish hobbits. <laughs> the, 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 the street urchin hobbits that talk in this old Irish dialect. <laughs> Uh, it's like stage. It's like a stage Irish dialect. Um, <laughs> I, I I thought it was fun, but I, I my issue is more with their the world building that they did, the the stupid ideas they included into that that culture. Um, but yeah, uh, so I guess that wraps this one up. What are what is everyone's thoughts on Tom Bombadil finally having a a real life, uh, a real life actor playing them, and uh, how do we feel that it's in the Rings of Power <laughs> that finally put him uh, in the story? So, yeah, put it down in the comments below, and that one's gonna be a fun one to read.